if you clicked on this video, you are ready for the Corinthians 2 Bible study. So we're going to get right into it. But first, let's pray. Holy Spirit, I thank you so much, God, for your presence. I honor the I honor God, the Father, God, the Son, and the Holy Spirit right now. And I just pray that this Bible study would be powerful, that someone would learn something from this and be edified through this. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, guys, so we're going to get right into it. So <clears throat> if you guys have not seen, um, if you guys have not seen the live stream of the Bible study for Corinthians 1, I will leave it linked below so that you can get caught up because we're going to be doing each chapter once a week. So every Wednesday. Um, so if you want to get caught up on chapter one, I'll leave it linked below. <clears throat> And actually, I think I'm going to set my um my tablet up here to do it like through my tablet. It's just easier. All right, amen. So we're going to get it started. And how are you guys doing today? How are you guys feeling? I'm feeling good. Um... I don't want to go off on, on a tangent here, but so I did my braids twice. So I did my braids yesterday. So it was Monday and I did like a blonde color and I absolutely did not like it after I did all that work. And I was like, I cannot even go outside like this because it almost looked like a yellow color. <laughs> so then I'm like, you know what? Let me just go to my normal, like my natural hair color and so I had to take those out and then redo them. And that's what I did the second day, which was Tuesday. I, all day, I was just taking them out and redoing them. And here we are. I am exhausted from that, for sure. Um, okay, so here we go. Um, so if you guys, just to kind of recap a little bit. So, um, so Corinthians is the first epistle of the New Testament. So Paul, um, the apostle, is the one who was inspired by the Holy Spirit, inspired by God, to write this um, chapter. And these are just a series of letters that he's writing to the church. And we can take this as um, we can take this as useful today because these are things that we still need to apply today. And it's just like he was writing these letters to these churches in a Colossae. It's the same thing, like the same thing applies to the churches today, because we see that in this day and age, there's a lot of things that are destroying the church and is typically coming from the inside of the church. And that's what the Bible says, that the church <clears throat> can be destroyed from the inside and not the outside influence, but who's inside that's actually um, working for the enemy and not for God and disguising themselves as sheep when they're really wolves. So Paul the Apostle is just writing these letters to express his his um to express warning and to show just certain things that we need to look out for and to show that he's contending for our faith and and so it really just describes a, a brother in Christ who is just yearning for the thriving of the Church of Jesus Christ. So Colossians 2 verse 1, here we go. Sorry, let me take a sip of water. <laughs> I'm so used to doing lives. I just don't even edit. So that's what I'm going to let this rock with. Alrighty. Verse 1. <clears throat> I want you to know how hard I am contending for you and for those at low. low I have to get this right. Let me move my tablet over here. And for those at Loadicea, and for all who have not met me personally, my goal, okay, so now he's talking to people like you and I. My goal is that they may be encouraged in heart and united in love so that they may have the full riches of complete understanding in order that they may know the mystery of God, namely Christ. 
in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Amen. Verse four, I tell you this so that no one may deceive you by fine sounding arguments. And we know that this is something in, in today's world that is, you know, we have, a, there's a lot of motivational preachers that, you know, are, their churches are filled, but it's through that motivational teaching. It's not through the power of Christ. So verse five, for though I am absent from you in body, I am present with you in spirit and delight to see how disciplined you are and how firm your faith is um, and how firm your faith in Christ is. So Paul, you know, I feel the Holy Spirit. I feel the Holy Spirit, you guys, you know. Wow. Wow. So Paul is, is, is expressing, right? Because I see a lot of people that, you know, they assume, <clears throat> I see a lot of people and that they assume that this walk with Christ is, you know, grace abides overall, right? But what Paul is telling us here in this last verse five, it says, I am present with you in spirit and delight to see how disciplined you are. And how firm your faith is. So there is some people that call themselves Christians. That they don't live in a disciplined lifestyle. So what does that mean? That just means that anything goes for them. Anything goes for them. Why? Because they have been fed or they're feeding themselves. The gospel of just grace. Right? So Christ died on the cross for us for our, our, our future, past, and present sins. And so does this give us license to willingly sin, to practice sin? Well, no, because the Bible also says for those who practice sin are sons of the devil. And so I love that in this verse right here, <clears throat> Paul the Apostle says, I am present with you in spirit <clears throat> and delight to see how disciplined you are and how firm your faith is in Christ. So it still requires a discipline to serve the Lord. And we can only do that perfectly through the Holy Spirit in us. So I just love that he included that there because I know a lot of Christians, they like to come into this into this walk with Christ, but they don't want to die to self, right? They, they just want to continue living the way they did. Because the first thing that, you know, that that rings to our ears is, oh, well, you know, Christ died for my past, uh, my my future past and present sins. And so we think that that allows us to willingly sin. But you have to realize that the Bible also talks about someone who does the wrong thing, knowing the right thing for that person that is sin. So it's a very fine line. But what I'm going to say here is. Walking in righteousness still requires discipline. It requires discipline and it requires the Holy Spirit because we cannot walk in the spirit without the Holy Spirit, right? Just like the complete opposite, like these warlocks and <clears throat> these uh, witches and all these wicked and evil people, they use demons to tap into those realms, right? They use spiritual demons to tap into those realms and to be able to astral project and to do all of those things. And so that is wicked, that is evil, that is a perversion of God's plan. This that oh my lights just went out my lights just went out okay but they turn back on but this is a perversion right it's a perversion of God walking in the spirit with us so the enemy always wants to uh, mimic the things of of God and make it so that he like created it when in reality Everything was created by God. The enemy is grabbing things from God's kingdom and perversing them and twisting them. And he does that. He does the same exact thing when it comes to the spiritual realm. So for those that think that we cannot have a, a spirit led lifestyle with Christ, you you really need to pray that the Holy Spirit will begin to work in you because it is through the spirit that we are that we are able to walk out in our fruits, in the fruits that the Bible talks about. 
So let's go on to the next verse. Now we're going into verse six, spiritual fullness in Christ. So then just as you receive Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him. Strengthen in faith as you were taught and overflowing with thank thankfulness. Verse eight, see to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy, which depends on human tradition and the elemental spiritual forces of this world rather than Christ. Wow, 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 wow. You know, <laughs> the, the, the word of God is so powerful. Like, it's so powerful. It's like, wow. You know, just then, I just thought about, you know, the, you know, with the false prophets and a lot of people coming out, calling themselves Christians, but then they give Christianity a, a, a bad rap because they do all of these evil, wicked things. And then people, and that's exactly the plan of the enemy is for that to happen because they know people are of flesh. And so people are going to look at that one religious group or that one, um, that one church or that people are going to labelize that one group and take that and run with it and say, oh, well, this must be what Jesus is for. But we have to always remember, like, Jesus is perfect, right? We are sinners. Jesus is perfect. So no one is not going to fly in heaven. Oh, Lord, um, I was, you know, I, I was treated wrongly in the church and I stopped going to church because I thought that that's what you represented. No, 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 no. We have to realize that Jesus is perfect and humans are imperfect. So long as you go to a church where there's humans like you and I, you're going to you might experience some some imperfectness because we are imperfect. We are sin, sinful in nature. Now, that doesn't go to say, you know, some churches where I've seen like sexual abuse happen. OK, y'all, I'm so sorry. My I don't know what's going on with my phone. Um, but I was filming on my phone and then it just wouldn't let me film anymore um, due to space. But I know that shouldn't be an issue because we actually pay for a limited on um, a limited space. So it's really strange that that just happened like that. Um, I think the enemy's mad at this one. For sure. And then my lights went out. Okay, <clears throat> we're just going to continue on here so that we can finish up. All right, so we are on verse 8. See to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy, which depends on human tradition and elemental spiritual forces of this world rather than on Christ. So anything that is not from the Bible, anything that is a philosophy, anything that is sent to confuse or to um or, or to challenge the word of God is sent by um by like it says those elements of um of this world those spiritual elemental forces of this world verse 9 for in Christ all of the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form and in Christ you have been brought to fullness he is the head over every power and authority in him, you were also circumcised with a circumcision <clears throat> not performed by human hands. So if you guys don't know about like the circumcision situation. So in the Old Testament, it was actually a thing for the babies to get circumcised. Those that were uh, a part of God's kingdom. So like Abraham's descendants, uh, etc. Because um, it was just it, it was <clears throat> an act that needed to be done back then because remember we weren't into the new covenant yet so jesus hadn't died for our sins so there were just certain acts and certain things that they had to do um in obedience to christ so we are not under that um we are not under that law anymore so it is not like actual circumcisions of men are not required anymore but they were in the old testament <clears throat> okay so um to continue on with verse 11 um it says your your whole self ruled by flesh 
was put off when you were circumcised by Christ, having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through your faith in the working of God, who raised from him, who raised him from the dead. Amen. So God raised Jesus from the dead. Okay, so I wanted to go back to one of these parts here. I wanted to go back to mm -mm -mm, you have been brought to, you have been and in Christ you have been brought to fullness. I think that is just so beautiful because you know I think the enemy can sometimes get in our heads and make us feel like we are nothing. Make us feel like we are not a part of God's kingdom. And this is just so beautiful. You know, it's just so beautiful to see that even wretched sinners like us, if we repent, we can walk in the fullness of God. And that's just such an amazing gift that to, to give, you know, the gift of eternal life and to be able to walk in righteousness and it, even in this evil and wicked world, to be able to walk with the Lord, we have the Holy Spirit as our helpmate, to have the Holy Spirit as our helpmate. And then once we go into heaven with Christ, like to be with him forever, it's just the most amazing thing that if you just sit there and really ponder on it, it's like nothing of this world is really worth giving that up for, you know, like living a victorious life in the spirit on earth and then going with the father like there's nothing that beats that life you know it's just amazing all right so verse 13 and we're almost up verse 13 says when you were dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your flesh god made you alive with christ he forgave us of all of our sins having canceled the charge of our legal indebtedness which stood against us and condemned us. He has taken it away, nailing it to the cross and having disarmed the powers and authorities. He made a public skeptical of them, triumphing over them by the cross. Amen. Verse 16. Therefore, do not let, do not let anyone judge you by what you eat or drink or with regard to religious festivals, a new moon celebration or a Sabbath. These are a shadow of the things that were to come. The reality, however, is found in Christ. Verse 18, do not let anyone who delights in false humility and the worship of angels disqualify you. Such a person also goes into great detail about what they have seen. They are puffed up with idle notions by their unspiritual mind. And we see that a lot. We see that a lot. Verse 19, they have lost connection with the head, which is God. He's the head of the church from whom the whole body is supported and held together by its ligaments and sinews grows as God causes it to grow. And so what does that mean is that Christ is the head and we are the part like we are his body, which can be related to like ligaments. So you have, you know, the head on a body and then you have the whole function of the body and each arm, each leg, each eye, each body part has a function in that body. Right. And so it's relating that to Christ being the head and we are a part of his body and we all come together to create one body for Christ, one church, one bride for Christ. Verse 20, since you died with Christ to the elemental spiritual forces of this world. Let's just sit on that. Let's just sit on that. Because it's talking about elemental forces of this world a lot. Let's just sit on that. Since you died with Christ to the elemental spiritual forces of this world so you died to the world why as though you still belong to the world do you submit to its rules do not handle do not taste do not touch these rules 
which have to do with things that are all destined to perish with use, are based on merely human commands and teachings. So let's talk about, so like the chakra, right? And, and, and manifestation and, uh, and the gospel of prosperity and uh, what else? And Satanism and Buddhism and all of these satanic things are really from the devil, right? What does it say about it? Where was I? Where it said it leads to, it leads to, yeah. They're all destined to perish with you. So everyone who uses the, who lives this lifestyle are destined to perish. That these are based on merely human commands and teachings. But I also feel like when it comes to a lot of the Satanism stuff, that stuff is really satanic. And that's just the devil's way of trying to perverse God's kingdom and like make his own kingdom on earth here through Satanism and through all of that stuff. Um, I, I feel like, you know, that, that is a whole nother conversation, but as you guys can see, it says that you're destined to perish when you're using those, uh, those methods and those teachings, um, and, and, and things like that. So 23 and we're done here. So it says such regulations indeed have an appearance of wisdom with their self-imposed worship, their false humility, and their harsh treatment of the body, but they lack any value in restraining sensual indulgence. And so what I what I find that for me, you guys can tell me, you know, for you guys what you took from that. But for me, I take that as the world, you know, the wisdom of God is above all wisdom. It's above all else. And so the world, you see a lot of people like, you know, on the Oprah show and just all of these different people that, you know, are known for speaking, like having these really good quotes of wisdom, right? So um, I, I can think of the people in my head, but I'm really bad with names, y'all. Like I'm really bad with names, but I can think of a few people in my head that have come out with just these amazing powerful motivational speeches and quotes and shows and they just speak on motivation and lifestyle things and the thing about that is without god it's just that it's just a motivational speech and so the bible tells us it sounds like wisdom it sounds good to our ears and we have to be careful because just because something sounds good doesn't mean that it's from god and so I just want to end this here in prayer with you guys. And I just want you guys to know that Christ loves you, that you're never too far gone from repentance. Okay. You can always repent. You can always turn and repent doesn't mean to say, I'm sorry or sorry. I got caught. Repentance means to turn from your sin. And sometimes that may hurt. Sometimes that may burn. And sometimes that may mean detaching from certain teachings, certain teachings and preachers that you might be listening to certain music you might be listening to certain friends that are in your circle it's gonna cost you to follow christ but it's gonna be so worth it you get to walk a righteous life with the holy spirit the most powerful entity and authority in this world and then you get to ascend with christ in heaven and die in the spirit and be present in heaven in paradise with all three of them forever and ever and ever. And so don't let don't let the devil make you feel like you have to like like oh it's not worth it. I'm telling you you have to die to your flesh. You have to die to self. But it's worth it. And God is calling you. He's calling you if you're still on this video right now. He's calling you to repentance. He wants a relationship with you. He wants you to realize that he died on the cross for all of your sins. Not just some of them, not just one of them or two, but for all of your sins. And if you just accept him into your heart and into your life and seek him through the word of God, through worshiping him and through fasting, you will have the you will have the holy spirit in you he will take host in you 
and you can walk out your days in full obedience to Christ. And that doesn't mean that we're going to be perfect, but that means that we're going to be going from glory to glory and perfecting our ways and changing our ways and not staying the same. But it's going to be a steady um, a steady journey to holiness. Doesn't mean that you automatically become holy. Because a lot of people, they get discouraged because they're like, well, I accepted God. Why do I still have these urges or still have these things? Doesn't mean that you're instantly holy. But what it means is that now you get to walk with a holy God that overcame all of those sins. And now he can help you overcome those sins. And so we get to walk that out and see the power of God even through us and our wicked and, and, and wretched desires. We get to... We get to have a God that can help us through that and help us become more righteous and produce much fruit. And so it's really important that you know that God loves you and he wants you in his kingdom. He wants you in his kingdom. He wants to save you and as many people, the people around you, your friends, your peers, your family. He wants to save them from hell because hell is a real place. And so what we can find in Colossians 2 is, is just a rule book for life. And he's talking to the church and he's telling the church, be careful for these false prophets. Be careful for these people that claim that they know me and that they're speaking from me, but they are not. They're actually speaking from spiritual elements, entities that have placed them there to destroy the church. So... I want to leave you guys with that. Thank you so much for joining me on this Bible study and I'll see you guys in the next one.